There comes a time in every boy's life where they have a moment. A moment so special, so grand, that it has to be captured on camera. This is that moment. Welcome to the stage, Michael Lenocci. Yeah, that was awesome. Wow. There we go. Good job, guys. Good job. Nice crowd. We got a good crowd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for pretending. Thank you. Thank you for pretending. Uh, this is fun. This is how I look um, up to this point in my life. This is uh, my rookie year of creepiness. <laughs> this is the first year I'm a creep, and you know I'm learning a lot. Like when I was 36, I wasn't a creep, but 39, this is the older you get, it's easier to be a creep. But 39, it's tough, man. This is the first year a girl was like, "Stop staring at me." I was like, "I'm not. Just don't move as quickly, okay? My neck, all right? Like my neck hurts. Like I wasn't staring that long. Jesus. The older you get, the more of a creep you get to be. You could be 70, just grab your dick and be like, "Nice tits, lady." They'll just be like, "Ah, dementia." <laughs> they don't care. When you're 90, man, you could just grab any girl's boob and just be like, I was falling. You know what I mean? They don't care. That's crazy. You could get away with anything at that age. 39, it's not like that, man. I was at a bar last week. I approached these group of women, and they're like, can we help you? And I just pretended I was the manager of the bar. I was like, you guys having a good time over here? Uh, just want to make sure you guys are having fun. Sorry, Sorry to interrupt you. My bad. Uh, I just like to make sure everyone's having fun. I'm going to get you a round of drinks on me. <laughs> Don't let me bother you. You guys have fun. And then I just walked out of the bar humiliated with my head down. Yeah. As I walked outside, some girl was like, are you my Uber? I was like, what the fuck is going on? No, I'm not an Uber driver. Some old guy outside was like, you're here to pick up your daughter too. <laughs> They're wild at this age, aren't they? I was like, no, man, I'm here to fuck your daughter. Like, why is this happening to me? I'm not sexy anymore. Like, it's, this is the age. Like, there's no, there's nothing sex. If you think I'm sexy, that's because you're fucking ugly, okay? <laughs> that's the truth. Like, if you think this is sexy, you got issues, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad, but still. <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not, there's nothing, like I'm tired, like I'm, the, I'm lazy. Like I'm not, like sex for me now, this is not exciting. This is just an errand. <laughs> like every time I'm having sex, I'm like, what's the least amount of work I have to do to get out of this situation? <laughs> like if we're having sex, my forehead is on your forehead. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm almost done. <laughs> do this much longer. Just sweating. I'm like a dead seal. Like, water! Just <laughs> like, what is that? That's my gut farting on your gut. Like, <laughs> there's just a fucking rainforest at our stomachs. Just, <laughs> just disgusting. I can't hold myself. Missionary? Three minutes tops. Like, I can't. I got a fucking carpal tunnel. I'm like, my wrists hurt. Ow! Ow! I can't do missionary! Just sweating, doggy style, almost tore my ACL the other week. Just like, I can't balance like this. You have to go on top, like I'm out of shape. That's disgusting. No mirrors, there's no mirrors in the fucking room. I'm not fucking insane, are you kidding me? There's just mirrors and you're like, oh my God, what is that? Like, I'm the ugliest piece of, I, get, I, I look at myself, I go, you're a shitty fucking guy. I even get, I go, fuck you. She's like, why? For dating me, you have bad taste. Have better taste, this is disgusting. No fucking mirror. In your 20s, there's mirrors everywhere. You're like, ha ha, I'll fuck myself. You know what I mean? You're like, no guy in their 20s comes to a girl. They're just like, I got abs. <laughs> okay, only me. Um, <laughs> remember your 20s, you're like, let's fuck in the shower. It's different. I'm fucking 39. If we're in the shower, I'm like, I don't have health insurance. Get the fuck out. Are you out of your mind? If a girl's like, let's take a shower, but get the fuck out of the shower. Are you a lunatic? I'll jerk off on the wall. We can talk afterwards. We're not taking a fucking shower. But 39, I can't be excited. I can't meet a girl. And she's like, I'm your soulmate. I'm like, you're what's left. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where were you? What took you so long? I'm 39. Like, why are you late? Like, why is my soulmate used? I got a used ass soulmate. <laughs> Just showing up limping with kids. What the fuck is this? I want a fresh ass soulmate. I got a used ass soulmate. Divorce with kids. That's fucking bullshit, if you ask me. That's like going to a restaurant and ordering a steak and the server bringing it over and it's half eaten, well done. <laughs> you be like, yo, what's up with this steak? He be like, ah, oh, my bad, man. Somebody else thought they wanted it. 
And then you showed up half dead, and we're like, ah, oh, we'll just give them this. I was like, all right, well, what's this steak called? They're like, that's our step steak. I was like, all right, delicious. Comes with a couple potatoes. They're autistic. But the point is, you have to hate each other to fall in love. I mean, that's what it is. You know you're not in love until you have a pillow in between both of you when you sleep. You just have a fucking body pillow in between. You're like, don't you fucking come on my side, okay? I'll never talk to you again. Why is your ankle touching my ankle? There's a wall for a reason, you fucking asshole. I'm sweating my balls off because your ankle's touching my ankle. That's why all the old people were like, build a fucking wall, build it. Build a fucking wall, I want them out of here. That's love, man. You know you love someone when you watch them eat and you're like, I hope you fucking choke on that. <laughs> I hope that goes down the wrong hole. And you're like, ah, what? I love you. It, the older you get, you're like, so you're, you're so in your ways, it's so annoying to date. Like, I love to fall asleep cuddling. I like to cuddle, because I had two parents. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I cuddle. I go, name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, I don't have tattoos, because I, I don't have trauma, you know what I mean? <laughs> no fucking tattoos, dude. You got tattoos? Fucking trauma. Stay away from them. But I cuddle, I like to cuddle, and then sometimes I fall asleep cuddling, but I'll, you know, every once in a while, I fart myself awake, and that's an embarrassing thing. <laughs> you ever fart yourself awake? That's embarrassing. I don't want that. That's not something I want to open up to. Like, that, that's something like, I was like, oh, this is just, I ate cheese tonight, you know what I mean? <laughs> so there's no way to play it off. If you don't know someone well enough, you'll just be cuddling and just like, Pfft, and then you're like, ah, 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 my throat, ah, what was that? My throat hurts, ah. oh, lethal weapons on. <laughs> I don't go, I'd rather her think I'm crazy than I farted myself away. What happened to that last guy? Oh, he was crazy. Ah, yeah, they all are. <laughs> what happened to the last guy? He fucking shit himself while we were cuddling. Way more embarrassing. You would have to move. My ex-girlfriend, man, she used, to, she used to have nightmares all the time. That was annoying. She would have nightmares every night. The last time, she was like, oh my God, I just had a nightmare. And I just turned to her and I was like, you're still in it. Hey, leave the weapons back on. <laughs> I think leave the weapons on. <laughs> I want to have a family, though. I really do. Like, I, I think about it because I'm like, I'm getting older, and I'm like, oh, shit. Is it too late? And then I'm like, <laughs> of course not. I'm a guy. <laughs> we could have kids forever. It's not like that for women, right? Women, it's a little bit more difficult, right? The older women get, there's more complications because they're harder to be around. So it's a little bit harder. <laughs> hey! Hey, men! And I know, I know, I know I have a wife out there. I know I have that soulmate out there. There's still time, you know? She's still in college, so I got time. And, uh, <laughs> hey! But that's what she should be, logically, because she's got to get her education, because I'm a stay-at-home dad if you haven't figured this out at that point. <laughs> and that's progressive. Get on board. That's progressive, because, like, women, you can do it. Like, you, you are the best. Like, why would I work? I believe in women. Now I'm not working, because you are the best. You can do it. Like, women, you've been fighting for equal pay all your lives. <laughs> Fuck equal pay. You get all the pay. Go. <laughs> Go, women. You're the best. You do it. Work. Because I believe in you. You know, you know how sexist it is to be a guy, to be like, oh, I'm going to get a job, too, to help pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, because you don't believe in her, okay? <laughs> Not my wife. She's covering the mortgage, the car payments, the groceries. Fuck maternity leave. Give birth, get back to work. I'll raise the boys. That's what's up. I'll buy them little toy vacuums and ovens and be like, you're going to be a stay-at-home dad, just like me, because that's the future. <laughs> that's progressive, guys. Learn how to cook and clean and don't talk back. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> I'll do all the stay-at-home chores. I'll fuck the pool guy. I'll do it. Like, whatever I gotta do, I'll do it. That's better. But you wait to get married, though. You know why? Because your taste changes. You get married in your 20s. We know the stats. You guys all like different things. In your 20s, you don't know. Like, you guys might be gay. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You could. You could develop it. You are gay. I, I could tell. I saw your face smile at that, and I go, that's a gay smile. Um, holy shit. Can we get that camera on his face? Jesus Christ. I was like, you don't know, you might be gay. You're like, yeah. I take all the cock in the mouth. <laughs> They're laughing, it's okay. And he's like, oh. and I'm like, okay. All right, too far, my bad. That's not gonna be in there. We're gonna cut that part out. He's like, oh. I guess I'm gay too. Um, okay, should have kept that in my brain. Um, let's move this stool over here. Anyways, let's get started. Um, let's get started. <laughs> Anyways, you wait to get married because your taste changes. It does, man. It does. You don't know, you know, you don't like what you like now 
what you liked when you were 20. But at this point, you're not going to change. You know what I mean? Like when I was 24, I didn't like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> a lot of us didn't because we were immature. We're like, oh, I'm not eating this. It's disgusting. It's the grossest thing I ever had. 39, now you know as you got older, you're like, oh, all it needed was balsamic vinaigrette. <laughs> That's called being mature. You put bacon or goat cheese on it, I'll put that shit in my ass. Like, I don't fucking care, because I'm a mature human. You don't know about your ass in your 20s. In your 20s, if a girl touches your ass, you're like, no, I don't do that. I watch NASCAR. You get like, you know, no way. I'll fucking dip for four hours. Get the fuck out of here, dude. I don't do that. I'm 39. A girl touches my ass, I'm like, play ball, baby. Get up in that shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Put some goat cheese and bacon in there too. Make it taste better. <laughs> that's called maturity, man. You're not a man until you look a girl in her eyes and say, finger me! Like, that's a real guy. <laughs> but that's why you wait to get married because you're not going to change your taste. I'm 39. Like, uh, you know, if I get married and two years into my relationship, I'm not happy, that's it. I commit to being unhappy the rest of my life. <laughs> like, I'm not getting a divorce. I'm too old for that bullshit. I'll just be miserably married. That's better for comedy. If I was up here right now, just complaining about my wife, half the room would be like, we get it. I'd be the biggest comic in the world. They're like, this guy's hilarious. It's more relatable. In your 20s, you'll get a divorce until you find out how expensive it is. You know how expensive it is to get a divorce in this country? I'll tell you. It's so expensive to get a divorce in this country that people choose Murder <laughs> over a divorce. <laughs> There's someone out there like, yo, I'm not happy in this marriage. But he's like, yo, I know the best divorce attorney. He's like, I think I'm just going to smother her. I think that's <laughs> like, okay, you'd rather spend the rest of your life in jail? Which is stupid because it's 2023, right? Hey, Elon, invent a divorce app. Like, this could be, we could prevent all of this from happening. Half of the murders would stop if you had a divorce app. Literally, you'd be like, hey, babe, on the count of three, swipe up. It's that easy. <laughs> You just swipe up at the same time, we're done. Come on, one, two, three, swipe up, let's go. It's that, it's, it's that, it's called wife away, let's go. One, two, three, wife away. You know who's not murdering their wife? A 39 year old man. Older guys are not murdering their wife, why? You know how hard it is to fucking murder someone? Do you know how hard it is to actually murder someone? You have to be in shape. You have to physically be fit to do, you can't use a gun, ballistics, you can't do that. I watch Forensic Files. You have to be in shape, you have to physically be fit, okay? If you don't know what you guys, do you guys not know what you have to do? I'll tell you, I thought about it a lot. I know exactly how you do it. First of all, you have to dig a hole. You have to dig a hole. Who in the ear thinks you could dig a fucking hole? A big ass hole, not like a foot. You're not burying a hamster, okay? This is a body, a big ass hole. You have to dig a hole, not with your hand, with a shovel, a shovel. Where the fuck is a shovel? Where is a shovel? If you found a shovel, circle it. Where the fuck is a shovel? Last time I saw a shovel, end of Home Alone 1. Where the fuck is a shovel, okay? There's no shovels. They don't exist anymore. We don't need them, okay? Even if you're out there going, oh, I could dig a hole. I could definitely dig a hole. Okay, part two. You have to carry the body. <laughs> like, ow, there's no way. There's no, my back, my whole back hurts for no reason. There's no way I'm picking up a full body. A full body, you can't chop it up. Again, forensic files, you can't chop up a body. You have to pick up a full body. A full one, okay? You, are you, are you think I'm marrying a model? She's gonna be a five, she's gonna be a little thick. I'm not gonna be able to pick up Miss Chick-fil-A and be like, holy shit, this bitch eats every day. Holy macro, there's gonna be Polynesian sauce everywhere. They're gonna make Michael loves Chick-fil-A and then I'm gonna get caught. So there's no way that's happening. I sit to pee every morning. There's no way I'm murdering someone. That's where I'm at in my life. That's where I'm at. Every morning I wake up, I walk to the bathroom, I go, wow, that was exhausting, and I sit to pee. That's where I'm at in my life. I start my day off with a break. That's where I'm at in my life. I wake up every morning, I walk to the bathroom, and go, wow, I've had a long day. I deserve a break. And then I sit down, and I tuck my dick, and I piss in the morning. That's where I'm at. And guys, you have to tuck your dick, because if you don't, you'll piss out the crack onto your underwear, not realize you did that, put your pants back on, carry on with your day. And they'll be like, why is it wet back there? And I'm like, oh. Forgot to murder my wife. <laughs> Book. Thank you, thank you. There you guys go, there you go, men, men. All right, let's get started, guys. Uh, that was all fun. That was just my personality. Let's get started. Uh, all of my friends are married with kids. Like my one buddy, he's got a whole family. 
And he hit me up, and he's like, yo, uh, let's hang out this weekend. I'm like, yeah, that, that would be great. Like, let's do it. He's like, what do you want to do? He's like, why don't you come over for dinner? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, and, and, then, and then what? <laughs> he's like, well, there's, there's dessert. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So I go eat dinner. That's what I did. I was like, yeah, we're going to hang out. And we go to eat dinner with my buddy's family. And he's, a, he's got a real family. Like I said, he's 50. So he's got a wife, kids, air fryers. That's how you know. <laughs> That's how you know a real family. If you're ever wondering, does my buddy have a real family? Air fryers in every room. Because chicken nuggets got to be ready. Because the kids are always like, I'm hungry, shut up. I'm hungry, shut up. Every room, living room, ready to go. So I'm eating with my friend. We're eating dinner. And uh, halfway, halfway through dinner in front of the whole family, he looks at me and he goes, yo, so when... Um, when we're done eating, let's go, let's go take a walk. <laughs> and I'm like, ha ha, that's my boy. He's talking code. <laughs> He's talking code, dude. I know what you mean. He's talking code. I love you. I knew you are who you are. Because <laughs> I think that means we're going to go get high. Because that's where I'm at mentally. Because that's what that fucking means, right? That's what that means. Yeah. So we finish dinner and uh, we go on a walk. And we're like two, three blocks into this walk. And I'm like, this is far enough. <laughs> we're pretty far. Nobody's going to smell it from here. <laughs> this is good. We're good from here. So I'm like, yo, what's the deal? Are we going to get high or what? He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, you said at dinner, let's go take a walk. He's like, yeah, man, we're on a walk. I go, who the fuck plans a walk, motherfucker? <laughs> You don't have to plan a walk. You could just come up to me and be like, hey, you want to go on a walk? I can make that decision right there and then. When you plan a walk, it insinuates that we're going to go do something more fun. He's like, no, man, that's not how it is. I'm 50. When I eat a lot of food, I get really full. And I got to go on these walks to stretch it out. So now I'm just on some walk with a 50-year-old man. I'm like, are we going to make out at the end of this? What the fuck is going on? I was like, should I hold your hand? Am I your nurse? Like, Everybody knows take a walk means let's get high. If you didn't, you're too old. <laughs> the only time take a walk doesn't mean let's get high is if it's like some old Italian guy. That means you're about to die. <laughs> hey, you want to go take a walk? You're like, ah, ha, I'm not that full, man. I just had an appetizer, dude. I got a boat. <laughs> I'm good, bro. I've seen all the Sopranos episodes. <laughs> My other buddy had a newborn baby. Brand new baby. Hits me up. He's like, yo... Come to the park and meet my baby. I was like, is the FBI listening to us right now? Why does this sound like a drug deal? Should I bring the formula? What are we doing, huh? But this is what people do with newborn babies and have little kids. They go to the park on the weekend. It's just something easy to do with kids. They can go there, be loud. Nobody gets stressed out. I didn't know this because I haven't been to a park in ages because I'm not a full-on creep yet. <laughs> Rookie year, right? I don't know. But on the weekend, if you go to a park, it's 100 families with their kids. So I didn't know this. I show up to this park, and I get to the park, and uh, I get out of my car, and I'm just like this, dressed like this. I'm just a guy at a park. And if you know anything about parks, you can't just be a guy at a park. Because everybody at the park starts to get anxious, and all the dads are like, what the fuck is that guy doing at the park? They start standing up like CIA agents, like, yo, Todd, you see him right now? You get the west side, I got the east side. Watch that guy. What the fuck's he doing at the park? Everybody's staring at me, and I'm getting all paranoid. So in my head, I'm like, how the fuck does somebody walk who doesn't kidnap children? So now I'm just like... I got candy and pillows, balloons, and I, I like kids. I like kids. Todd, just being more obvious. But I don't know this, man, because like I don't like I said, I haven't been. I don't have a family. Like I never even been. Like I said, I've been. I've never been close to having a family. Like I've never, you know. <laughs> like I don't. E <laughs> I don't. You know. I don't. I've never even. Like, I've never had a scare in my life. I've never had, I've never been like, oh, like, I've never, I know some people in here, like, I got two scares living at my house right now. They made it out. I wake up every morning, I come into the kitchen, I go, what the fuck is that? Oh, shit, two kids, you know? I've never, never had a scare. I don't, you know, it, no, it works. I just don't know, maybe, I think mine's spinning circles, you know? I think they're like, where do we go? Um, but I've never had a scare. I never, you know, I've never had to, uh, convince someone to have an abortion, you know? Oh, here we go. Um, 
Never, never had to, you know, persuade someone. You know, some, some, I have friends that have had to do that, you know. Like, but I've never, you know, got a girl pregnant and was like, hey, are you religious or do I choke you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's tough. Like, I've had friends who have had abortions, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. They had to persuade a girl to have an abortion. And that's, you know, regardless of what you believe, that's, that's crazy. But you have to admit, that's a salesman. <laughs> That's a hell of a good salesman. You know, I don't have a sales company. I don't work in sales. But if I did, and I was hiring, <laughs> and that guy had that resume, <laughs> you could have one guy who's like, yo, I graduated from Harvard. You're like, dude, that is impressive. The other guy's like, yeah, but I persuaded three women to have an abortion. <laughs> You'd be like, that's fucking impressive. Three women? He's like, yeah, three Republican women. <laughs> Three Republican women? Yep, three Catholic Republican women. You're like, what? This guy's the wolf of Wall Street. Why would you not hire him? That's really all I know about abortion stuff. Um, it's kind of my stance on it. All right, the closest to a family I have had is a dog. Right? Yeah. People say that. They're like, a dog, yeah, dog's a lot like a kid. It's a lot like a baby. You're like, eh. I can't leave a baby home for seven hours <laughs> with a bowl of milk and Cheerios. Hey, it'll be fine. Put, put a couple diapers on the floor. Just leave four diapers on the floor. He'll hopefully shit on them. Put one over his face in case he throws up. It's gonna be fine. Can't do that. Dogs are great though. Dogs is a big, big part of my life. I had dogs my whole life and I love dogs because dogs love you no matter what. They love you. They don't care if you're a loser. <laughs> They don't care if you're cool. They don't care what your ethnicity is, what your religion is. They love you. And the main reason a dog loves you no matter what is because they don't know there's a better life. <laughs> a dog's life is its best life. Yeah, they're like, this is an amazing studio. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it before. A dog in a studio just thinks he has a giant cage that you moved into. <laughs> They don't know, man. I used to, you know, I used to have a dog, but he killed himself. He wrote a suicide note. He said, I wish I had a pool. And then signed it paw print. And it was a little smeared because that's when he fell off the stool. I used to live with a pug. You guys know what pugs are? They're the best. Those are the worst dogs I've ever met in my life. I've met all the dogs. I've met every single dog in my life. That's the worst dog. They didn't even finish making it. You ever seen a fucking pug? Its eyes are about to pop up. Its tongue is out. A pug looks like someone squeezed it for too long. You're like, why is this? This is how dumb we are. If you're like, hey dog, what sound does a dog make? They would fail that test. They would go like this. And you're like, nah, that's not. It's not the right noise. Uh, they go. <laughs> a, pug, a pug looks like it forgot how to breathe and remembered at that last minute. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't have a pug. I used to live with a pug. That was one of my roommates. But I did have a dog and I did have to put him down. Okay. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life because I'm a white straight male. <laughs> Sorry. That's it, you know? That's how you gotta look at the perspective of things, right? That was the hardest thing. And, you know, I had to put him down because he stopped working, all right? It was very tough. Sorry, he was like, meow. I'm like, nope, that's not how that works. So I brought him in. And, uh, you know, so I brought him in and I go to the vet and I go, hey, um, you know, my dog's not working. And she's like, yeah, it doesn't look like it. And I was like, well, I was like, what, what, do, we, what do we do here? And she's like, well, what do you wanna do? And I go, what? I was like, She's like, well, legally, in the state of California, I can't tell you what to do, but whatever decision you make, I'll support. So I was like, all right, let's eat them. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, what are you talking, like, why are you putting the burden on me, motherfucker? You're the doctor, so I gotta make the decision? That's all she's really doing. She's like, you say it, I'm not saying it. So we agree to put him down, we go in the back, and he's laying on the table, and she, she, he, she puts him down, right? And I start crying, and I'm looking at this lady bawling, crying, and I'm like, will you be my wife? You know, because that's like, 
It's my first time being vulnerable to a woman. I was like, oh, I think I love you. <laughs> I go, I, I feel so close to you. And uh, I'm just crying, and she looks at me, and she goes, you know what, just take your time. And then she walks out. So now I'm just like, all right, I guess I'll take my time. And I'm sitting there with my dog, and he's just laying there, and I go, how long do I take my time for? <laughs> Like, what is take your time? What's the length for take your time? I'm like, is it five minutes? Or is that not long enough? And they're going to be like, that guy's a cold-hearted piece of shit. He doesn't care about the dog. He spent five minutes, and he doesn't deserve dogs. Or do I spend 20 minutes with the dog? Is that too long? And they're going to be like, I think he's fucking the dog. <laughs> so now I'm in my head all fucking paranoid. I go, how long do I send? How long is take your time? I don't know. I'm freaking out. So I'm trying to kill time, so I don't know what to do. I'm a weird guy, so I touched his eye. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I did that. I fucking touched his eye. That was weird. I shouldn't have done it. But at least I know what an eye feels like. You know what I mean? He was dead for sure. Because if somebody was in a coma and you touched their eye, they'd be like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? He didn't do, are you kidding me, dude? He didn't do that. He still stayed dead. And then I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I'm freaking out. And, and then I'm sitting there and it's surreal, right? Because he's just laying there and like he's lifeless. I'm like, this is weird. I'm playing with his head. So I opened his mouth. This was a bad idea. His tongue just came out. And I was like, oh my God. Now it looks like I fucked a dog. So now I'm freaking out. I'm like, how do I get rid of it? And I, I, so I just hide his tongue under his head and I'll be like, he got hungry right before he died. It was weird, man. I was like, I got to get out of this situation. So I, uh, so I walked out of the room. I left him. I walk out of the room, and as I walk out of the room, the whole vet is sitting in the lobby waiting for me, right? Because they want to comfort you. They want to be there for you. They're all, like, just waiting there, and they're teary-eyed and stuff. And I walk out, and, like, four ladies, potential wives, are just looking at me, <laughs> just staring at me. And I start walking towards them, and then in my head, I get in my head, I'm like, how the fuck does somebody walk who doesn't fuck dogs? So now I'm just like... <laughs> Hi... Hey, I like kids, I like kids. A little bit about me is uh, I, uh, I grew up, that's it, here I am. Uh, yeah, I grew up, I grew up with uh, two parents. One was uh, one, one male, one female. Pee pee in the VV, you know what I mean? <laughs> the original way, the way God wanted, you know, missionary baby right here, obviously. Just a nice little missionary baby, you know. Good little missionary sperm, like, may I come in? You know, very polite, doggy style sperms over here, you know, loud and aggressive, but you know, two parents. Not everybody's gonna come up here, it's the future. You're gonna have people up here like, I have two dads, and you're like, whoa. You must have been playing catch all the time, you know what I mean, like, two dads, that's a lot. If I had two dads, I'd be in the NFL, I'll tell you that right now. There's no doubt, just running routes all the time, just getting yelled at, like, run the fucking route. I'm like, Dad, I'm too tired. He's like, well, go ask your other dad if you're too tired. Dad, can I get a hug? I'm too tired. Get the fuck out there, you little bitch. I'm like, just getting yelled at by two Italian dads. No, I grew up with two parents, two opposites, opposites, total, total opposites. My mom was British, dad's Italian. So, you know, they balance each other out, right? Because Italians are very short-tempered and British people are very ugly. So it works out. <laughs> works out, right? We know. And thankfully, we had my dad cooking, right? Because British people, they don't do that. <laughs> Nobody's like, after this, they're like, yo, let's go eat at that restaurant, beans on toast. It's going to be fire, dude. <laughs> dude, they got the best prison food I've ever had in my life. It's disgusting. Dude, British people are just so bad at branding. They have a dish called toad in the hole. <laughs> Just hearing that, you'd be like, N no, I'm good. Toad in the hole, bro, toad in the hole. If you don't know what that is, it's sausage and batter. And when they bake it, the sausage rises up over the batter and looks like a toad looking out of a hole. And they're like, wouldn't it be clever if we named that toad in the hole? Isn't that a genius idea? You're like, no, man, that's like us naming oatmeal throw up. Like, why would you do that? That's disgusting. That's not clever at all. Uh, uh. Hey, let's have some throw up in the morning. We'll throw some blueberries in there. That's how it is, man. But I have anxiety because I have an Italian family. Just always yelling. There's yelling all the time. Like, my dad yelled at us so much, we would get in trouble for his mistakes. That's insane. Like, one time we were driving to Disney World as a family. And he missed the exit. He was like, is fucking nobody going to tell me to get off at that last exit? Nobody's paying attention, huh? He's like, I didn't even miss it. I did it on purpose just to see if you guys were paying attention. You weren't because you're fucking morons. How about that? 
I was like, you're driving and I'm six. Like, why am I in trouble right now? That's how it was, man. We get yelled at so much, we get in trouble for sneezing too many times in a row. If you sneeze more than two times, you'd be like, get the fuck outside. Why are you disrupting everybody in the house? Hold it in. What are you doing? Like, I'm like, this is traumatizing. Like, maybe give me a hug and say, bless you. I'm like, I'm definitely going to be a comedian now. Like, what the fuck's going on? I'm 39. I'm traumatized. Like, now I sneeze like this. I go, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Bless you. Shut the fuck up, dude. I wasn't sneezing. Sorry about that. No. Are you sneezing? No, motherfucker, dude. Fuck you, dude. I'm just going to go outside and spank myself. And then I go... And then I come everywhere. Um, it's a bad combination. Because when I was younger, I liked to drink a lot and I had a bad temper. So I get in a lot of fights when I was younger. Like in college, I got in a lot of fights. I've been in eight fights, eight knockouts, knocked out every time. <laughs> Just wasn't good at fighting, man. I got knocked out every single fucking time. One time I got knocked out in a nightclub. I was really wasted and I had to pee really bad and I couldn't find the bathroom. That's how wasted I was. So I found like a dark corner I don't know if you guys know anything about nightclubs. You're not allowed to pee in the corners. <laughs> they don't like that. So I walk over to this corner and I start peeing, minding my own business. And this bouncer walks over and he says, like, what the fuck are you doing? I go, what the fuck are you doing? Stop being gay, you know? <laughs> this is 2000, you could say that back then. You know what I mean? So I can't get in trouble. I'm just telling you a story. <laughs> he didn't like that. He walked over and just knocked me out cold. Yeah, I'm laid out. I wake up. I'll never forget the first thing I was thinking. I was like, uh, I was like, is my dick still out of my pants? <laughs> because nothing is more humiliating than being knocked out with your soft penis just hanging out. <laughs> I'm a grower, not a shower either. So it's just like my helmet resting on my two nuts. Just like a little turtle head, like a little, just three testicles, basically. Basically, like a, like a little toad in the hole, like, oh, would you like to eat this toad in the hole later? <laughs> you guys are great. I'm Michael Inochi. Thank you so much. Thank you.